India had a great and ancient civilization with medical text dated back to 800 BC. In the 5th century, Indian astronomy was at its peak under the great astronomer and mathematician Aryabhatta, who figured out that Earth revolves around the Sun thousand years before the Europeans did it. But then, the waves of invasion and the civilization led to the decline of science in India. Not until independence in 1947 was India able to make a fresh start. The concept of harnessing science for a developing nation to build a modern India could emerge only after independence. For Indian space program, the story goes right back to 1960s under the vision of great physicist Dr. Vikram Sarabhai. He emphasized the importance of space program under this famous quote, but again, it was not an easy task to convince the government of the day for the relevance of the space program for a developing nation. He made all his efforts at the end. With all his possible efforts, he could convince, he could make the government to, to resonate for the initiatives and provide the funding for the space program. That's how the Indian space journey begins. These are first pictures of how the, the shows the way of working in the initial days of ISRO. You can see a sounding rocket being carried on a bicycle to the Arabian coast and a satellite being transported in a bullock cart. Such a humble start with extremely limited resources. And then the first satellite was launched, named Aryabhata, in 1975. Subsequently, ISRO engineers built much, much more sophisticated rockets, PSLV, GSLV, and more advanced satellites in the area of communication, remote sensing, space exploration, so on and so forth. Here I would like to quote a passage by Mitch, by Mitch Albom's book. It is in Mitch Albom's book, Tuesdays with Mori, where Mori tells about the conversation among the, between the two waves. The wave at the front tells the wave behind, I'm scared because now I'm going to crash on the shore and cease to exist. But then the second wave tells the first one, you are frightened because you identify yourself only as a wave. I am not scared because I perceive myself as a part of the mighty ocean, which can never cease to exist. Israelites, uh, the spirit of Israelites is something like that second wave. How, that is how they function, function with so much of cohesion and motivation to work as a dedicated team towards to achieve the higher goals of Israel. And then, today, India is counted among top six space agencies in the world, where thousands of engineers are working. <laughs> thousands of engineers, scientists, technical experts in various fields are working for the future space endeavors. India's first moon mission to Chandrayaan 1, you must be remembering, it provided the data which could detect water on lunar surface. And then, after moon, what was the next destination for ISRO? It was our next neighbor, that is Mars. But, that is Mars. But why Mars? There are many questions many of you would like to know why we have to go to Mars. There are many reasons, a few of the reasons I would like to go here. The first reason is, there are many unanswered questions for the, related to Mars. Where did the Mars come from? Is there any life on Mars? Is, can it tell something about Earth's history or Earth's future? There's a very interesting point I, should like to, I would like to tell you. Over a billion of years of age, when our planet was just a ball of molten iron, Mars was supposed to have abundant amount of water and also a thick atmosphere capable of sustaining life. A billion of years, while our planet flourished for love with life, the Mars lost all its favorable conditions. What caused it to happen? 
The data about the Mars could teach us, could provide some insight into this aspect to get some answers for these unanswered queries. The other, other major reason would be the improving the quality of the life on Earth. It is well said, there's a, well, uh, a good saying, very good saying that by pushing the mankind to its limits, to the deep oceans or into the deep space, will we make the discoveries or inventions which can be adapted to improve the quality of life on Earth. This is a very, I'd just like to quote an example, an computer algorithm which was de developed for one of the Indian space, for the, one of the space programs, which when used with X-ray images, it could do a better job in detecting the early stages of breast cancer or than the unconventional method. This cross-pollination of field, that is, in innovations in one and stimulating the revolutionary changes on, in the other, it happens all the time. But then, the most important aspect, the most important reason is such, such endeavors, they provide a very great inspiration to the entire generation of this new entire generation of space explorers. The such endeavors really galvanizes the students to become the scientists or mathematicians or technical experts, so on and so forth. With so many dimensions being present in the space, why not a country of 1.25 billion people think about new discoveries and inventions originated from own land for the benefit of whole mankind? And that's how the mission to Mars took up. ISRO's, the one, one of the many steps towards this higher goal was mission to Mars. But mission to Mars is not an easy task. There was a very tough task ahead for us. We had to, there's a totally new project which has to be realized in a mere time of 18 months with no heritage of interplanetary missions with ISRO. Interplanetary missions Actually, there's a to and fro time delay of, it can be a maximum of 40 minutes. For example, if you want to uh, light a bulb from here to a remote control, it will take 20 minutes of time for the signal to reach the bulb to come on, and then you will come to know whether the bulb has come on only after 20 minutes. That's, that's the amount of delay, the huge delay involves. It means we had to build an extensive amount of onboard autonomy. We had to build a system with ha having brain and the other systems capable of doing self-diagnostics, then self-recovery, and also to execute all the loaded instruction with high precision. Because a minutest error in executing those instructions would jeopardize the mission. And that is what had happened in many earlier missions. Out of the 51 missions, only 21 missions were successful, less than 50%, and then none on the first attempt. We started working, working for the hardware as well as the software with equal pace. Hardware elements, major, of, major portion of hardware elements were adapted from the previous successful missions, but then the autonomy software, it was more or less a new venture with rigorous process of brainstorming sessions with our engineers, the network auto autonomy was drafted. The next major challenge to realize the Mars mission is to design a precise path which will take the spacecraft from Earth to Mars. And then it has to take the spacecraft from Earth to Mars but with a minimum fuel. We do not have luxury of having huge amount of fuel with us. It's a minimum fuel trajectory. Then the launch day was selected based on the minimum energy requirement opportunity. It actually comes when the Earth and Mars, they are at a particular orient, uh, related geometry where it, that comes only once in 26 months and that provides an opportunity to have a minimum fuel. Uh, fuel requirement. So what happens is, if you lose, if you do not launch in that period, it means you have to wait for the next 26 months, and that was 
uh, not at all uh, agreed to the higher management. So we have to uh, realize everything in this shortest possible time. The other aspect of mass uh, to further minimize the fuel requirement, it was demanded that the fourth stage, the last stage of the PSLV rocket, when it took off, it should inject the spacecraft not over India, but across Australia, over the Pacific. But there, over the sea, we did not have any antennas, ground stations to track the launch vehicle. This was decided to deploy the two ships over the locations, and then it took two months of time for the ships to reach from India to those locations. Then what would happen? The main biking moment came. Actually, the ships couldn't reach on the expected day due to bad weather conditions. Oversea, the ships reached, reached 10 days uh, with a delay of 10 days. And remember, we had a very limited time window. If you do not launch in that window, you have to wait for 26 months. Wait for 26 months. But then the ships arrived just before the window closed and the launch took off on 5th of November 2013 while mighty PSLV took off the satellite, placed the satellite into its first parking orbit. <laughs> this picture tells the total travel itinerary of the spacecraft from Earth to Mars. You can see the each burn operation, the orbit is getting raised. It is going more and more away from Earth. And then, on uh, 25 days later, the final maneuver, when the spacecraft has to leave the Earth's gravity, it has to come out of the gravity well of Earth and then move towards the Mars. That is called the cruising towards the Mars. The cruise direction is very important. Very important because if the direction is not right, you will not meet Mars. So, what was demanded is any underperformance, not only underperformance, overperformance also is not desirable. The exact performance is a must, that is 99.9%. This so made history that day itself on 30th November 2013 when it would put the satellite into the correct cruise path. I would say many missions actually failed at this structure. They even could not leave the Earth's gravity. But India is so made the history that they itself. <laughs> How challenging it is to reach Mars. This is a small uh, example by Dr. Charles Elaichi. You just go outside and hit the golf ball towards Los Angeles. The golf ball has to go straight into the cup, straight into the hole. And that too, then, to make it a little bit more challenging, the hole is moving. Okay? <laughs> so that's how the challenging it is. The, the May, after the 10 months of travel, the cruise travel, spacecraft traveled around 650 million kilometers of distance, and then it came very close to March, that is the closest approach day, it came by near, as much as near to 500 kilometers to Mars. But reaching near to Mars does not mean, mean you have achieved the mission. It should get captured in the gravity well of Mars. It should start rotating around Mars. It means you have to provide the thrust, you have to provide the energy to the spacecraft, push the spacecraft into the well of Mars gravity. This is called MOI burn operation. It was a very, very critical operation. Our, our preparation started two months in advance. The, the, all the configurations were discussed thoroughly. The final configurations and the final list of commands were loaded 10 months of learning. The deputy operations director, I and my team was responsible to ensure that this operation takes place as per the set procedures because a minutest error in operation will jeopardize the mission and then after doing so months of tra so long travel still you will not meet Mars. On 24th of September 2014, the D-Day, our day started 12 a.m. in the morning and then we had to keep a close watch on the 
compute the data and ensure that all the events are happening as per timeline. And as uh, I told, at 7 a.m. IST, the, it was happening early morning as per Indian Standard Time. At 7 a.m. IST, we got the first signal from the spacecraft that the auto sequence of uh, onboard has been started by the onboard computers correctly. 21 minutes later, the main engine started firing. That was really a moment. Half of the success was ensured at that time itself because that ensures now the thrust is started by the spacecraft to be given to the satellite to enter the Mars. But then, after four minutes of time, four minutes later, there was no data, no signal from the spacecraft. What happened to the satellite? The satellite went behind the mighty Mars. No signal could reach Earth. Those 26 minutes of silence, is, it, it looked as if the control center's clock stopped. All data on computers, all eyes glued to computer, just waiting for the signal to come back. At 8 a.m. IST, the history was made. It was witnessed by our Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The complete hall was full of, the, uh, full of sound of claps, jubilations, contentment, visible on all faces, as you can see. I could not believe that I have become the part of such a spectacular historical event of our, own, of our country. Mom entered Martian orbit. With many first to its credit, the first mission in world to get captured by Mars at the first attempt. The most economical project realized ever in the interplanetary area. The shortest, that it got realized in the shortest possible time. The first Indian satellite having full scale onboard autonomy, being part of such a prestigious mission it really was a matter of pride for me. I come from a middle class family from Lucknow, where there has always been importance given to the education. I used to, I remember many, uh, those long hours of study, my mother used to awake with me on those nights so that I don't feel alone. I have always had a fascination towards space, collecting the news articles related to any small space activity by ISRO or by NASA was one of my hobbies. One day, the dream came true. I got an intimation letter from ISRO to join one of the leading centers in Bangalore. But then, the decision to send the eldest daughter so far, those 17 years ago, it was not at all an easy decision to be made by my parents. But I should thank my mother and father who'd taken that tough decision to send their, their eldest daughter and showed their utmost confidence on my capabilities, on their daughter's capabilities. I joined ISRO and I got opportunity to work for many prestigious missions, of being operations director for many missions also. But then working for Mars was the most challenging one. I remember on MOI day, I got the first message of congratulation from my husband. Being a woman and being at a responsible position, it is, not, uh, it is highly impossible to execute your duties without the support of your family. And that too, when you had two small kids. I remember many long night arrival, late night arrivals. Kids will be waiting, then running, coming, embracing you, with not too many complaints on their faces. Those moments of inspiration, those moments have always been my moments of inspiration. Inspiration to put your extra foot without getting carried away by mental or physical exertion. Today, mom is sending huge amount of data and it has opened a new regime for the scientist, the space physicist to analyze the data and try to find out some, reveal some of the mysteries of Mars. But the major contribution of mom 
I feel it could be said by this picture whereas of a letter by a young boy to a chairman Isro where he is telling that how proud he feels for our own country and Isro and he wants to join Isro. It is this inspiration. <laughs> it is this inspiration which got stirred in every Indian student, every Indian. And awe and fervor towards science got injected into the whole country's veins. Probably that is the reason why I'm here amongst you sharing my experiences. Thank you.